Hi, I'm David Cook. I am the clarinet professor at Millikan University. And today we'll be talking about etude number 15 from the 21 Foundation Studies for Alto or Bass Clarinet. As you look through this etude, you may notice there's a wide variety of articulations. And I think one of the most important things with this etude is to follow those articulation markings quite meticulously. We have everything from straight staccatos to small groups of slurs to combinations of staccato and slur. And it's important we follow those directions to get the different styles and characters in this etude. Along with articulation, we want to make sure it doesn't affect our rhythm. The beginning of this etude is an unfortunate spot where this can often happen. If we play with too clipped an articulation and we don't carry our air forward through the space between notes, it can sound like this. We'll talk about that squawk in another passage here. But it's important that we don't clip too much. We don't want to choke the note off. And we want to make sure our air continues through the articulation. As you go up into the area above the staff, you might have a tendency to squeak or chirp, especially if you're trying to articulate up there. There are a couple things to worry about in that register, and uh, the first of them is to make sure you aren't trying to articulate too aggressively. I know I just said to follow the articulations meticulously, but that doesn't mean we want to uh, uh, strike the reed too heavily with the tongue, or else we'll get a, a chirp or a squawk. And also, make sure that you, you, if, you, if it helps, you can drop the tongue, the back of your tongue, ever so slightly as you ascend. You might even see that right here, that this area is going to go down ever so slightly. That helps those top notes come out in a very full and resonant manner. You've probably noticed there aren't too many places to breathe in this etude, so I recommend breathing after all of the dotted quarter notes, in addition to the few places you have a rest, such as measure 24. And we want to make those breaths as uh, unobtrusive and as quick as possible, as to not interrupt the musical direction. The last thing I'll talk about with this etude is the wide uh, possibility for musicality and expression in this. Even though it's fairly fast and the rhythm is pretty consistent throughout, we have a lot of dynamic markings in there. One example is measures 37 through 39, where we go from piano all the way up to forte in only two measures. And we want to practice that, making that wide dynamic change as much as possible. One of the best ways to make sure that we're playing expressively is even when we're learning the notes right off the bat. Always play with expression and musical intent. Not, don't just focus on getting the notes because then it's that much harder to bring the expression in later. If you have any questions about what we talked about today or would like to know about taking a lesson with me, please email me at dcook at millikin.edu. Thanks for listening and happy practicing. Thank uh you. -huh.